Darren, Darren, Carrie and Sky. Weekday, 6 to 9 a.m. Do you, ever, do you ever sit down and do the math and like go, hang on, what year was that? Yeah, I do actually. I'm Because Akeem turned 18 this year and I started comedy when his mom was pregnant. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I remember you decided I'm going to quit my job at Old Mutual and try yes. this thing that I have no experience with whatsoever while my wife is pregnant. Yes, that's, that's exactly what happened. And you thought that that was rational? Yeah, it was. You know, sometimes you have to follow your heart. And at that time, at that time, it was like easier to follow your heart than it is now. I guess. See, most other people well, at, at that stage, they go, hang on, hang on. Financial consultant at Old Mutual, it's steady. I've got a child. Let me just see how the first five or six years goes. Follow my dreams later. But not you. You were like, oh, yeah. now, now's the time. Yeah. I, I, it, it was also a lot to do with um, Akeem's mom, mom w- w- with B at the time. She was like, yo, yeah. dude, why don't, don't worry about those things. If you do what you love, things will fall into place. And yeah. And then, you know what was the sad thing about that? She did not see me be successful. And that is quite sad. And she did not see him going through school and stuff. So that was, that's quite sad. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, if it wasn't for her, I would have still probably been um, at Old Mutual. Maybe, maybe I would have been finance minister. Who knows? There's that. I would, yeah. I would choose you as finance minister. I know your, your brain. I know your mind. I know your heart. I would choose you over, over T, uh, who is our finance minister right now? Tito Mboweni. I would choose Nah, I think he's a good finance minister. I would have probably been the cricket South Africa president now. It's, it's, it's crazy that um, people make money from the stuff that people need. If, yeah, it's, it's, it sounds strange, but the more a product is needed the that's why drug dealers make so much money because it's like the product is is needed all the time uh and, and, but you, what, what i'm trying to say is is that i think that, that, that was an industry to... we should that, 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 that a lot of comics might be might have thought you know what we're not getting gigs we're not getting work but people need cigarettes and alcohol i i know how to deal that yeah you see what i'm saying and, and, and it's not, <laughs> so you also know a person. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we remember <laughs> back, back, back in, back in the old days. And uh, my mind boggles about this. My mind still boggles uh, about this. I'm trying to be, uh, trying to be a responsible adult now. I'm a dad, right? Uh, and, uh, and even while I was a, a dad, so early days of my daughter's life, I was still uh, making drives to go and meet up with people on mm. the street corners to go and make uh, purchases of, uh, of uh, recreationals <clears throat> mm. <laughs> without thinking that at every single one of those chance purchases, I ran the risk of being arrested and going to jail every single time. But you forget about that. You do it every week. You do it every month. Yeah. But if, you know what's the worst is like if getting arrested and now, it's like, I don't mind. I wouldn't have mind getting arrested or, or, but you can get kidnapped now. Or you can, you, you, there's like other things, worse things that could happen. Uh, and next thing you know, then you wake up in Syria or you, your, your kidney is in Brazil. So those things yeah. is, is, is much more nerve wracking now thinking about your, the stuff, the, the risks we took for certain mm. things. Yeah, I remember once we drove to Bloemfontein and there was drunk guys in front of us that had an accident. You remember that day? I remember. I wanted to overtake them and then I was like, wait, 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 wait. Something's not yeah. like here. So I slowed down and yeah. we followed them for a while. Just before, was it just after... Vin, uh, Kalidin. Was it, Vin, was it Kalidin? not Kalidin? Goldsburg. Oh, Goldsburg. Okay, yeah. And then these oaks just said a hard left and a hard right and then just rolled this car and then we you and i stopped and we went climbed over the fence to the car crash and like are you okay and they got out of the car crash and started fighting each other yeah (laughs) 
Frank. Dia like Frank. Frank. Eh kau cuba sen ni pun dia suruh Ray ni. Who come to this movie? And and these guys is proper. I'm like dear, we like ah those guys must be dead. In the meantime they get yeah, out yeah. of the car and yeah. fighting. Ah I was like yo that's strange. And and we were riding like 120. Uh, it's like yeah. on that road. Ah, oh, that's those crazy times. Uh-uh. And we were like, eventually, you and I looked at each other. We were like, guys, we are here to say, can we phone an ambulance? Can the police. Take yeah. you to the hospital. And they were like, stand back. We're busy blood swimming each other. And we were like, Joey, let's just go, bro. Let's just leave these hugs. <laughs> I remember that clearly. And it was a black and white bra. Black bra and yeah. white bra. African. <laughs> they were bras. They were were brothers, speaking Afrikaans to each other, going, Jay, Ray, Kat, Jay, Ray. It's like swearing. Sorry, sorry for me swearing. Or no, <laughs> no, no man, it's, pre- it's pre-recorded. We can always beep out. Mm. Mm. So, mm. so now, you know, just quickly, I want to finish up about the middle class. So listen, the obliteration of our middle class. My, um, a lot of people are saying it works into the national development plan. And, uh, there's a, a nice opportunity for the government to press reset. Because maybe maybe a bloated middle class or an influential middle class was an impediment towards the national development plan. But we didn't even have a, a strong middle class. Um, we didn't. And then national develop the national de- development plan that was like written by um Trevor Manuel back in the eighties using um back in the eighties information. So all the data mm. and the stats that was used. To write the NDP, and it was on the back of um, the ANC coming into power uh, and the corruption of the apartheid government. So that mm. was different um, stats and different information and data that was used to come up with the NDP. Uh, now that data and stats that they used for the NDP back then, I guess it's more or less redundant now. Um, so I, I, I think there should be a new one written. Um, I, I'll, I'll go with that. Maybe Herman's got a plan. Yeah, like there's, there's lots of influential dudes that can, if they form a political party that will appeal to the dwindling middle class, the little, the, the little middle class people that's left. Um, they'll appeal. Vusi Tembenkwayo, uh, uh, Herman. You think Vusi's gonna run? I don't think he's going to run. Uh, I think he'll, he's he'll put his weight behind of, someone. Yeah. So I think he, 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 he should um, come up with the economic strategy for the person. Uh, Herman Mashaba, then um, Musi Maimani, he's still out there. Uh, Magdalene Munsami. There's lots of um, strong politicians that doesn't have a party um, that mm. if they have to focus together, then there might be, uh, but again, because if we look at the middle class, it would be like maybe 5% of all South Africans. Because poverty, let's, let's just be honest, all the poor people, the poverty people, are, they're either going to vote for the ANC or the EFF. Hmm. So, yeah. And, and, so, and I think, okay, let me, ask you. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me ask you this question, right? And before you answer this question, uh, people that are asked this question to, I need to remind them that corruption isn't new to South Africa. And uh, mm. if you, you can go and have a look at world-class, in-your-face USA corruption uh, from, the, from the, the Koch brothers, or you can look at uh, the, the kind of corruption that has crippled Lebanon. Um, this, the, the, uh, the corruption, is, it's... it's, it's it's endemic. It's it's around the whole world. How do we how do we even how do we even begin to start a political party or um, uh, governing a country with? How do we eliminate eruption, uh, corruption? I, I don't even know how to how to even move closer towards that. Um, I guess yeah. I guess so. There's 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 um the Rothstein family. They've been corrupt the corruption since forever uh we can look at lots of people that you've named now uh, vladimir putin uh, in russia for instance the corruption in georgia and in in certain balkan states uh how do you i don't think you can 
eradicate it. Because even in the time of Jesus Christ, when he was there, there was still corruption. Judas, remember? Mm. Um, there's, mm. there, there was, there's, there's, there's always corruption all over the place. It's Lao Tzu, um, the Chinese model is that uh, although there is, the best of leaders is hardly known by their subjects. If you empty people's minds and fill their bellies, then how many will remain? Now, if I have to, um, I have, not translate, if I have to um, just try and explain what I uh, observe from that statement is that the, for you to be a successful corruptor, <laughs> you mustn't be in a public eye. You must, yeah. but then you must empty people's minds and fill their bellies. So if a person's belly is full, he's not going to question where that comes from or how that. So there's always going to be a cake. Unfortunately, uh, the corrupt people in most recent times the wants to take the whole entire cake instead mm -hmm. of just a piece of the cake. I got, a, uh, I got a warning because I said something on air like that. I said, I basically said, listen, corruption is always going to be there. Can I just ask the corrupt people out there, don't take 90%. Be, be corrupt. Yes. Take 10%. Yeah. And you know take what? 90% of you can take 10%, but it still leaves us plenty. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole point. It's like the cake is always going to be, at least you buy some ingredients for two other cakes. Just don't yeah. eat the entire cake. And that's the problem. Don't be a cake. Oh. Yeah, and don't be a cake. Don't be a cake. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you run for politics, that should be that's that's your slogan, Joey Rosdeen. Don't be a cake. I'll yeah, leave you. Yeah, be banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> March lockdown throwback joke. <laughs> did you fall into that gap did you make banana bread I bet you did bro bro like everybody did that stuff eh? people painted like I painted like, I became a plumber like you know the tap that's beating you go buy your Bobby yeah. Yarn Spanner what is yeah. a, 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 the English word for Bobby Yarn Spanner it's a monkey wrench a monk a wrench yeah so yeah. uh, that's one of those uh, words that started English and then Afrikaans stole it. So it was a monkey wrench for beyond Spanish. Yes, I think I think that is also part of language that um, needs to because the woke people and cancel culture will be like, how can you call it a monkey wrench? Um, <laughs> you think the monkey wrench is not safe anymore? Why can't you call it like a hippo wrench, a hippo wrench? <laughs> Or something else that has a strong grip. What else? You can't call it a gorilla wrench. You can't call it. You can't. You can't call it a crocodile. Gorilla. Crocodile wrench. A crocodile. Yeah, but a crocodile is also derogatory in in, in other cultures. So we have to. Maguena. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maguena. <laughs> Maguena. A Maguena. <laughs> As I think you've been to Lesotho. <laughs> <laughs> so now, okay, okay oh. so here's the double whammy, right? Uh, the f five, six, seven years going into lockdown, um, the, 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 the places that we could play in, in stand up comedy, were shrinking because of uh, PC culture, because of, because of pseudo wokeness, right? But that, yeah. but that didn't seem to affect you. You didn't mind. You, you, you have all the comedians were quite fearless. Uh, yeah, the thing about it is, I think if you have a strong message, and I think if people can relate to what you're trying to say, whether, it's, whether they take offense from it is, is totally um, up to them. Not even up to them. It's their psychological makeup. So mm. if, you, if you speak about certain subjects that's, uh, borderline offensive it depends on your life experiences as to whether you so you can't speak about gbv you can't speak about rape that is no go areas um you can't but you yeah. can speak about some sort of um subconscious racism and certain things that has been ingrained in your psyche without you even um wanting it to be there and that's unfortunately mm. the problem with lots of of specifically Afrikaans people, is that um, 
what they told and what is ingrained in their mindset seems to be for them the correct thing. Um, mm. and, and similarly with um, religious people, Muslim people, for instance, whereas mm. we need to unlearn all those things. Um, mm. uh, and, and then you'll be able to treat or see people better. Like, for instance, if you grew up with lions, then you're not going to be afraid of lions. And then if mm. people speak bad about lions, you're going to be like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so talking thing. about that, has Durban forgiven you yet? Who? Are they, they, they wrote stories about you. You said something at some stage and then you made the newspaper. I don't even know what it was about. You offended someone. No, it's not Durban. It's the whole country. It was the whole country. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw it in the Durban papers, sorry. Yeah, no, it was it was me discussing um secondary sources in religion. Yeah. And and where does secondary sources come in uh, in religion? So you know mm -hmm. all dogmatic religions, uh, mainstream religions got secondary sources like Judaism have the Talmud. And the mm. book is the Torah. The Christianity has mm. got the New Testament that wasn't written by Jesus. It was written by people, mm. and Peter compiled it like after Jesus' death. That's a secondary source. Mm. Similarly, in Islam, there's also a secondary source called a hadith. And a hadith mm. was written 200 years, 150 years after the demise of our prophet, and it was compiled by certain guys, uh, Bukhari and Ibn Majah and stuff. So most of the um, rituals and religious practices is not necessarily based on from the in the quran that we know it now it's from secondary sources from and i was just questioning, and i was just basically questioning that uh, as to how so why did they get so upset hi right? why did they get so upset with you uh i think that is cognitive dissonance right? because nobody wants to hear that what they believe in might not be the truth mm. And nobody Isn't wants that the to source hear. for most of the um, Islamic conflicts that are happening, even in the Middle East, is that uh, yes. the ones? Yes, it's absolutely that. It's absolutely it's the self-righteousness. And I think it's also um, trauma, generational trauma. Hmm. I think that's, that's part of it. So I got into trouble for basically um, making fun of um, a, a narrator of a secondary source mm. and and um, ever since then getting back into you know it hasn't really affected i mean prior 20 prior uh, uh 2020 didn't affect your your bookings or gigs you were still you were still getting gigs and booked and yeah, yeah i i guess back. i guess i didn't get as much islamic gigs but the problem mm. is is that the people, or oh, what I found, that the people that was attacking me wasn't people that actually knew what they were talking about. And, and the other ones was um, uh, the self-righteousness. Like, uh, last of last week, there was this um, imam from Cape Town that sent out a video that said he's going to get married again. And that was in bad taste. But the reason why he got, that is from secondary sources. So... Basically, he was using secondary sources. Uh, this is in my observation um, mm. to to uh, uh, justify why he's getting married again. So yeah, mm. it, I don't know that some of the practices it goes against the spirit of what the Quran stands for. Some of the practices in Judaism goes um, against the spirit what the Torah stands for. And mm. they use the Talmud for uh, a justification of why they act um, again a certain way. So, yeah, that's a, a discussion for another day. Yeah, but it, it's I, also I you know if you have a you have a look at the difference between the American evangelical and the South America, say Roman Catholic, and you go, those would be two different religions, but they're not. They're from the same book. And you go, but you are so different. It's and surely, surely it's us comedians who are able to should be allowed to observe that communicate that and get you to laugh about it so you can stop being so judgy that's our job absolutely absolutely that's why i love you so much darren Moore. i learned so much from you 
I've I've learned so much from you over the years. <laughs> so so much. And and yeah, I guess that's our job. That is that and it's true. Like um I I th- Christianity uh uh evangel uh the angel care versus the pater no p- punk punkster w- versus the w- versus um seven day adventist it's all christianity but it's the interpretation mm-hmm. of secondary sources yeah similarly the difference between Sh- shia and sunni the shia mm-hmm. has got their own secondary sources the sunnis got their own secondary sources and they interpret in a certain way and under the sunni muslims there's like 70 there's like um the diopandis the barialis the uh, uh salaf salafis so you have all these different sects within sunni islam as well so mm-hmm. i think what happened was the normal person that doesn't know and doesn't have this information um, was the ones that was attacking me that without knowing mm. that wow it's actually deeper do you know this is what i i and i you know this <clears throat> you know that you're a good comedian when all the other comedians come from backstage to come and watch you because you have this uh, you have this way when you do your comedy of you can go into the very philosophical and you can go into the intellectual and you can go into the spiritual or the uh the the, the areas or the religious or the dogmatic and then you also go into fun facts interesting you know did you know that this happened because of this word in this place and this day <clears throat> so you like if anyone if if if, if anyone uh, uh, if you ever suffer um, a comparison when people say, yeah, mm-hmm. Joey Rosdin is like so and so. Who did they mm-hmm. who did who did they who did they compare you to? Actually, unfortunately, I haven't been compared to nobody, right? International. Even international. Uh um, don't say like he's like Dave Chappelle. He's like South Africa's Dave Chappelle. Yeah, Dave Chappelle is on another level. I wish I could be Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is like one of my heroes. He's like a hero. He, the, the, the stuff that Dave Chappelle do, the stuff that Dave Chappelle speak about, I mm. aspire to, to speak about. And, I think and, you do. Yeah. And you must remember that Dave we Chappelle, think that, that Dave, Chappelle, you, Dave Chappelle couldn't do to South African audiences what you do. So I think you are our Dave Chappelle. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. Yeah, that is the best compliment I've received in a in a long time. Because Dave Chappelle is like, in my observation, one of the best comics ever. Like yeah. I proper probably rate him with. I, I think he's better than Pryor, and Pryor was the best. Um, mm. I think he's better than Pryor. I think, yeah. uh, but also the the our, our content is different. Our content is different. Um, mm. Now, like prior, couldn't speak about certain things, but what Chappelle speaks mm. about, yes, it's so close to my heart. It speaks to me. Like I, I don't mm. even want to laugh when I speak when I watch him. I just want to watch him. Yeah, you know? and yeah. I don't, don't want to inter- I don't want. I don't want to interrupt him with laughter. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, and then you do laugh, and because it's so funny, you have to laugh, but you don't want to yeah. laugh because you yeah. want to hear what he's gonna what he's gonna say next, and. Um, that's how I try and do my comedy, where I go up on stage and it's not necessarily making people laugh, it's imparting mm. some sort of message and then they, they have to, if they laugh, then I know, ah, that was cock funny because that wasn't yeah. my purpose for making them laugh, yeah. it was just my purpose for imparting such uh, information. That's the bit of this interview that's going to make it on air. I don't know how much else of this chat's going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> do you know, yeah, you know what made, like made you know what made me go like here, here we are twenty years in the industry and made me oh. go watch Dave Chappelle and I go uh, um, um, I <clears throat> I, sh- I can't I can't call myself working in the same industry as that guy that's not the same thing that's like it's not that when he goes on on stage and he says okay here's the punchline i'm gonna i am going to say these words as a punchline just now and you're still gonna laugh i promise you're still gonna laugh even i'm telling you the punchline plus the punchline is so rude yeah 
where I yeah, kicked that's... my neighbor. <laughs> Stick them <and> toe. Stick them <laughs> toe. And you and are still going to laugh. Off, yeah. Then she fell down the stairs. <laughs> I told you you're going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part All right, we've got, we've literally got three minutes left. How are you, um, so you, are we selling tickets to your show? Quickly, plug, plug your show. It's a uh, digital show. How does this work? Um, so it's an online streaming show. You can buy tickets at Quicket. Um, it's called A New Normal. Joey Razdin presents A New Normal. And it's all about my experiences during lockdown. And tickets is available um, at Quicket. And the show will be streaming on the 22nd of August at 8 p.m. on Quicket. Darren, Darren, Carrie and Sky. Weekday, 6 to 9 a.m.